He was Real Madrid's fan on the pitch, and a combustible player remembered for his goals, but also a shocking assault on an opposing player, and even an attack on a referee. Decades after the end of his career and his untimely death, fans still sing about him in the seventh minute of every game at the Bernabeu. No, it's not the Ronaldos, Zinedine Zidane, or even Raul. This is the story of Juanito. If you listen carefully during the seventh minute of matches at the Bernabeu, you'll hear a chant, Hey, 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 Juanito the Wonder. To many fans, Juanito, Juan Gomez Gonzalez, a stocky, skillful and tenacious winger who wore their number seven shirt, remains the most vivid embodiment of the club's spirit. He won five league titles with Real between 1977 and 1987. In 1984, he won the Pachichi Trophy as the league's top scorer too. But while those achievements are crucial to his legacy, they're not solely what he's remembered for. Juanito might never have made it to Madrid at all, or had fate been different, he might have been an Atletico player. Born in Costa del Sol, he joined the club's academy in 1969 and was still a teenager when, in a friendly against Benfica, he fractured his tibia and fibula in a collision with the opposition goalkeeper. It would take a year and a half for him to recover, and he would play again, but never for Atleti. Instead, he would be released and would fight for his career at Segunda Division Burjos, where during four seasons, he would help to win promotion and also the first of 34 caps for Spain. In 1977, despite interest from Barcelona, he signed for Real Madrid, where, despite being just 5 foot 7, he would build a reputation as one of the fiercest competitors the club had ever known. And there was a darker side to his playing personality too. In 1978, the first of several incidents occurred that would partially define him. Eliminated by Swiss club grasshoppers in the second round of that year's European Cup, Juanito, enraged by a late offside decision that had gone Grasshopper's way, confronted the referee. What happened next has never been entirely clear. A shove, a push or a punch. Whatever the case, Juanito was banned from European football for two years, albeit with the sanction later reduced on appeal. It was a terrible moment, but worse was to come. Ironically, however, it came at the end of a game in which Real had thrown away a lead. They'd won the first leg 3-1 only to lose the second 2-0 and be eliminated on away goals. And that was ironic because Juanito's career would, for the most part, acquire its resonance from miraculous comebacks. Between 1977 and 1980, he and Real would win three consecutive league titles. It was a team full of greats of their era. Centre forward Santiana, who averaged more than a goal every two games during those three years. Piri, the midfielder who played in the 1971 Cup Winners' Cup final with his arm in a cast. Vincent Del Bosque, who would one day coach Los Blancos. And Goya Bonito, the indomitable, undersized centre back. But it was in Europe, in the next decade, that Juanito and Real forged their legend. In March 1980, Having lost the first leg of a European Cup quarter-final 2-0 to Glasgow Celtic, Real performed a ferocious comeback, winning 3-0 at the Bernabeu, with Juanito scoring a decisive goal four minutes from time. In 1985, in the UEFA Cup, today the Europa League, Juanito led one of the great revivals in European football history. Real faced Borussia Mönchengladbach in the third round and were thrashed, losing 5-1 in Germany to face almost certain elimination. But no. Juanito created the first two goals in the return leg, each time with perfect crosses for Jorge Valdano, and Real won 4-0 to progress again on away goals. Juanito was substituted shortly before the end, and when he came off the pitch, the undisputed man of the match, he jumped and punched the air in celebration as he made his way to the touchline, to roars of the crowd in the Bernabeu. The previous season, although without quite as much influence from Juanito, Real had performed similar comebacks against Anderlecht and Inter Milan in the Cup Winners' Cup. It was the birth of a legend. After the first leg of the Inter game, which Real lost 3-1, Juanito gave the quote with which he is most often associated. 90 minutes in the Bernabeu is a long time, he said, in Pidgin Italian. And so it proved. Real won the second leg 5-1 to advance. They were the team that was never truly beaten, and Juanito, a wonderful player but a ferociously emotional competitor, was one of the symbols of that indomitability. And he still is. When Madrid face adversity, their supporters urged their team to invoke the spirit of Juanito. But of course there was that other side to his career, and that flared worst of all in one of the most shocking incidents European football has ever seen. In 1987, Real faced Bayern Munich in the European Cup semi-final first leg in Germany. After a bad foul by Lothar Matthias, Juanito lost control, stamping first on Matthias's chest and then with force on his face. He was sent off. 
He was then banned from European football for five years and he was fined heavily by Real. By then 32, it effectively ended his career at the Bernabeu and he left the club at the end of the 86-87 season. He would play for two more years with Malaga before moving into coaching. But in 1992, tragedy intervened. Juanito was managing Merida in the second division. He'd been to watch Real Madrid face Torino in the UEFA Cup and travelling back after the game, he was killed in a car crash. Reporting the accident and Juanito's passing, El Pai, the Spanish newspaper, wrote that death came between the two passions of his life, meaning Merida and the second act of his career, but also, of course, Real Madrid. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Ollie Kay, Amy Lawrence and James Horncastle. With the latest transfer news and insight on every Premier League football story that matters, TheAthletic.com puts you inside football. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.